Welcome to Reverse Engineering News. I'm your host, Hash. Thanks for joining. This week, we're going to look at Bindiff, which is a binary diffing tool, getting JTAG on the iPhone 15, and emulating and exploiting UEFI firmware. Three awesome stories. Now let's look at Bindiff. What is Bindiff? Bindiff is binary diffing of two uh, binaries. So looking at say two strains of malware or something else, but, but what is it? It's a plugin for Ida Pro. What's Ida Pro? Ida Pro is like a debugging tool, a decompilation tool for reverse engineering. It's incredibly expensive. It's the tool that people have used for a very long time to do reverse engineering of binaries. It kind of, I feel, probably sets the bar as the tool. Every other tool is trying to approach Ida Pro. Now, it's priced, uh, it's priced where they believe it is, which is really expensive. So let's talk about Bendiff. Bendiff was started by a company called Zynamics, which is a German company. I don't know when Zynamics was founded, probably early 2000s or mid 2000s. At some point, it got acquired by Google. Now, the plugin that they made, this Bendiff plugin, only worked with Ida Pro. It was also expensive. It was like $1,000 or so per license for Bindiff, and then Ida Pro is in the thousands of dollars for it. So it's like an uh, aftermarket stereo system for a Ferrari. One thing's very expensive. The additional parts you need are expensive. That's to be expected. You know, if you have to ask the price, you probably can't afford it. So Google acquires them in 2011. When they acquire them, they also have some sales-related issues. At first, they say, okay, it's available in the U.S., but this is a German company. They were selling all over the world, so all of a sudden, they get acquired by Google. You can only buy the product in the U.S. Then they say, okay, now it's available in the Americas, and then they say, okay, now the Americas plus EU, but if you're in the rest of the world, well, good luck. You probably can't get this product anymore. That's kind of weird. What else is kind of weird is that they dropped the price. So it was a thousand or twelve hundred dollars or so per license. They drop it to two hundred dollars, which is crazy. So they buy this company and they immediately take what was probably a product that was being sold and they drop the price drastically, 80% or more, to two hundred dollars a license. Then we fast forward to 2016, and all of a sudden they announce, ah, the product's free. You don't have to pay for it anymore. It still only works with Ida Pro though. So you still have to buy a Ferrari, but now they'll, they'll give you the stereo for free. You know, we're buddies, right? Why not? We want to help the community. Okay. I mean, it doesn't make any sense to me, but sure. Now we fast forward to 2020, all of a sudden there's experimental support for Ghidra with Bindiff. Now things make a little more sense. It took four years, but Ghidra's free. Bindiff is free. Okay, now, now I understand the, the free play. It's a free tool that's out there. Then we get to 2023, and they announce, Google does, that they've open-sourced Bindiff. Okay, so now the source code's out there for free. Uh, you can get the thing for free. Everything about it's free. The problem for me is none of this adds up. It doesn't make any damn sense. So they buy this company... I'm guessing for the talent, the people that were at the company, and they wanted that talent inside Google. Why they choose to give the product away, essentially they, they reduce the price like crazy, doesn't make any sense to me. If it was already selling, why are you giving it away? But okay, they say they want to help the community. But I don't know how much that helps the community unless the community's stealing copies of Ida Pro because that thing's still damn expensive. And now it's open sourced. My guess for why it's being open sourced is because they don't want to invest any time and effort in supporting this thing anymore. And so this is the first step to saying, hey, the community can take care of this from now on and you can add whatever features you want. That's the only thing that seems to make sense to me. The altruistic, we're just giving it away. I don't buy that for a moment. Um, so in the comments, please, if you know what is actually going on, like what the backstory is with this, create a burner account and tell us what the heck is going on. Because none of this adds up for me. Companies buy things to sell them for money, not to give them away for free. Now let's talk about getting JTAG on an iPhone 15. Stack Smashing released a video. It's already within a day up to 100,000 views, and rightfully so. 
It's a great video. It's very well produced. He does a great job of explaining and giving you the backstory of what even JTAG is, which is a test access port generally being used for programming devices. Uh, it used to also be used for doing hardware checks on circuit boards. It probably still is, but most of the time when you read about JTAG or you see something, it's the programming port that's being used to load software on a device. Now, on the iPhone, it's actually a, a whole hacking challenge just to get to JTAG. On embedded devices, most of the time, you take the thing apart, you see some pins that aren't labeled, I wonder what those could be. You hook up some stuff to it, you look up the data sheet on the part, you find it's JTAG. You may or may not have access through that port because sometimes they lock access of the microcontroller or whatever, but if you erase it, then that's how you reprogram it. You can generally do that stuff through the JTAG port. On the iPhone, all of it comes down through the connector on the bottom. It used to be the lightning connector, now it's USB-C. And so there's a whole separate interface that you talk to that can reconfigure those pins, the USB-C pins or the lightning pins, to actually allow JTAG, like the SWD, the, the serial wire debugging, the kind of two-pin version of JTAG, to flow through those pins. As Stack Smashing shows you, all the steps involved in talking to this kind of separate interface that gives you access to that, and all the little things he had to do along the way, and a, a funny thing at the end of the video, I won't ruin it for you, you should go watch it, of what ultimately uh, led to the connection and to seeing it. Now he's clear to say, this isn't an exploit, this is just how you access JTAG on the phone, and once you do access it this way, you don't actually have the ability to do anything. You have to find some other exploit that will give you access. But this is the first step. Without this, then none of the rest of it uh, matters. And so I highly suggest you watch the video. It's a, a great overview, and it's fun to see how he figured this out. And finally, let's talk about emulating and exploiting UEFI firmware. So Joe Lothan at Margin Research wrote uh, a fantastic article. It's a long article. But it's long because it literally gives you every single detail you need to set up what he's talking about. And what he's talking about is being able to test out and write code for and debug UEFI firmware. Now the challenge with doing embedded work is that, say we dump the firmware of some microcontroller, well you're doing static analysis basically. It's not like doing uh, using Ghidra to emulate something, put it in debug mode, step through the code and watch what's happening in memory and everything else. You're literally, you don't have this development environment. That's the challenge with embedded work and that's the challenge that he saw. And so what he does is help you set up an environment to do all of this low level debugging and, and testing and development for UEFI firmware. Now he starts with helping you set up QEMU getting a version of the firmware, it's called OpenVM firmware, OVMF, which you can build and run in QEMU. Now he walks you through all the steps to build, uh, debug this firmware, step through it, find the addresses, the information you need of where to load the information, how to construct the, the exploit that you'll send across, and ultimately booting into an OS and sending it and seeing it happen. It's a, it's a great write-up I'm, I mean, right after this video, I plan, well, after the editing and everything else I have to do, I plan on setting this up because I want to get better at setting up these environments and doing debugging and stuff through the, the software side. And, and by looking at this article, it seems like I'll just follow it step by step and I'll be able to do it. Now, at the end of this article, there's a ton of additional reading, other sites that he found very interesting, and other people that are doing this work, this UEFI reverse engineering uh, and other things related to that that are also worth reading. I mean, it's probably like a rabbit hole for the weekend to go down. If I start today, I don't know. I might I might not get anything else done. Now, if you like this show, I encourage you to go over to Patreon and become a supporter over there. I recently released a modem video where I showed uh, how I was able to access it and access a network that's around me and listen in. You see in the video up here, I also share a lot of other information on the Patreon side about how to access all these things within the modem, what are all the steps, everything you would need to recreate it. So if that's of interest to you, I suggest you go check it out. You can also find me on Twitter and TikTok. 
I recently did a, a video on Van Eck freaking, and it got a lot of views on there. If that's something you think I should explore a little more, looking at leakage and cables and what might come across, and maybe some other areas, comment down below, and I'll I'll dig into that a little more as well and make some videos. Rover and Discord, and uh, create a page on the wiki. There's been a lot of interest in the wiki, a lot of people creating pages. It's great, more people sharing information with each other, sharing information with you, so that we can all improve our skills and uh, reverse engineer all the things. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next week.